Hello everyone. It's been probably got over five years since the last video I posted. Been meaning to post a video on throwing a bowl. It's just a simple bowl. It's about a pound and a quarter of clay. I'm here at Livermore Valley High School. It's during my prep period. And, uh, this is prepping, so I could show this in the classroom when it's uploaded and done. And so here we go. It's gonna be a bowl, just an everyday general purpose bowl. Pound and a quarter of clay. Leave enough at the base, probably about a half inch, a little bit less. Now, bowls aren't easy. I think that most people think, oh, a bowl, you know, it's beginning shape. I don't think bowls are beginning shapes at all. They're very, very complicated. You have to trim them, you have to wait for them to dry properly in order to trim a good foot on it. And if you can't, manage wall thickness of the clay efficiently, then you're gonna just be making thick bowls that you're trimming, which I think in bowls can oftentimes be, trimming can be used as a crutch for poor throwing. Um, I was raised with, oh, if you can't throw it, then just trim it off. And I thought for years that was awesome, it was great, but now I don't subscribe to that. I think I would rather have somebody that's learning throw with efficiency and use trimming as a technique for refining the shape and finishing the shape, not making the shape. So I'm gonna try and utilize as much clay as I can, really gathering that clay up from the bottom, leaving enough at the top so I have a substantial rim. You can't see, but the interior of the bowl is rounded. And then I'm, I'll look down the sides here and get an idea of the wall thickness. If you're not sure, I'm gonna poke a pin tool through the bottom at an angle. And that hole gets sealed up. People freak out when I do that. So that's how much I have in the side. So I'm gonna go a little bit, a little bit thinner on the base. Now, when I stretch the bowl out, it's gonna get thinner. A little bit of compression on the rim. Some people overemphasize that it's important but rims crack on bowls in my experience what I've seen is when people are trying to trim them too dry and then they wet them down they add wet clay to when they turn upside down and tack it down that wet clay soaks back into the dry rim and that's what cracks your bowl not because of compressing the rim these are rib these are taken from a French curve a nut woodworking tool and it's just traced on a piece of plexiglass. Go down into the bowl. Now that even freaks people out. People don't use a rib. That's fine if you don't use a rib. If you do use a rib, I start from the top and go down into the bowl. So what's happened is I start off at the base, or I mean at the rim, go in and then go towards the middle. I don't go straight down because it'll get too wide out here. So there is a point with the bowl where you can go beyond the base and that bowl loses its stability, loses its strength. So I'm just gonna push right about here. Now I'll go up the side, continue shaping it. So what I'm looking for is just a regular curved bowl a smooth transition. I don't want any boxiness to the interior from the rim to the wall to the floor. I want it to be a nice smooth transition. Now it's pretty much done. This area for me is a little square so what I'll do is I use two ribs. Is I'll hold the, pro, the rib on the inside and I'll curve this one so what I'm doing is I'm making this interior and outside profile the same. And also I get the smooth the outside of the bowl a little bit more. So this I can round it more. 
finish shaping and smoothing it with those two things, okay? Now, if you're completely freaked out and that's too sterile of a bowl, it's too stiff, it's too rigid, Here's one for you. Then I, what I do, take a flexible rib and I'll start down at the bottom. I'll push in, push in, let go, and come up. So you see what happens to the bowl. <clears throat> and on top, when you're looking down on top of it, it has this kind of altered look to it. Sometimes it gets triangular. I leave that, sometimes I don't. And then I'll finish it with a wood tool and I'll take off any excess of the bottom. I don't have any excess of the bottom because he's efficient throwing. And um, <clears throat> now I'll cut it off. So that little mark I made is just for it to come off. Now, if it's thick enough in the base, I can pick it up and it's pretty stable. Now this little bowl, it's fine to pick up like this. People freak out. How come you're not throwing on a bat? Um, one, if I had a hundred bats, I would, I would probably throw in a hundred bats, but then I always have to stabilize the bat. And someone will go, oh, why don't you use a grab bat grabber? Well, I just don't have a bat grabber, never use them, and I can throw, I'd rather throw on the wheel head, because it's not gonna rattle around. Um, if I'm making plates, then I will throw in a bat, or a big platter, I will throw in a bat. But for little bowls like this, and if the base is uh, thick enough, I can just pick it up, okay? And that's it. Thank you very much for watching.